Hey guys, what's up? My name is Zach, and today I'll be doing my second um, 2018 midterm Senate election video. Um, a lot has changed, I think, on a state-by-state -state basis, especially in some uh, toss-up states. Um, so I'll be covering that here, and all right, let's get right into it. Um, some states that we all know are going to be safe, Washington, California. Uh, I'm, I'm just going to run through the safe Democratic states first before I get to the safe Republican states. Um, Minnesota at large, I'd consider safe. Um, New York... Um, most of the states running through here. New Jersey, I'm just going to leave that, um, I'm still getting used to this whole new color palette 270 to win has in. Um, I'm just going to leave that blank for, for argument's sake. At this point, we'll discuss it in a second. Um, Vermont would be safe, and, and for this one, I would consider Maine safe, uh, just because Angus King has been doing very well in opinion pro polls, and just like I said in my uh, last Senate election video, I believe, um, Eric Brackey um, just does not have the, the name recognition um, to, to beat someone like Angus King. Um, okay, so safe Republican states. Uh, Utah as a result of Mitt Romney. Wyoming. 270 to win, or at least one of the, um, one of the polling that uh, 270 to win uses is characterizing this as likely Republican and not safe Republican. The race in Nebraska between uh, Deb Fisher, the incumbent, and Jane Reynolds. I would, I don't know why they're doing that. I don't Unless there's some information about this state that I don't know, I can characterize this as safe. I think it's mostly just because um, Deb Fisher doesn't have very good approval rating, but regardless, um, that <laughs> Jane Reynold, Jay Raybold, I don't know why I kept on saying Rent Reynold, Jay Ray Raybold, I believe that's how you pronounce the name, is not gonna doesn't stand a chance against a Republican incumbent in this state, even if it's even with a slightly lower approval rating. Okay, so we're just gonna start west from. Oh, and Hawaii, of course, um, I would characterize as, as safe with Maisie, Maisie Hirono. Okay, so we're just going to go west to east across the map here. Um, okay. So, th also, there are some states here that could be safe red and could be safe blue, but I'd just like to discuss them first before I characterize them as either. Uh, so, Nevada. There have been very little opinion polls between Dean Heller and Jackie Rosen. Um, the ones that are out... Um, give it a very narrow lead, but there's only been a few out, so you can't really base too much off of polls so far. But what I can say about this race is that Dean Heller is probably, I think, the most unpopular senator in the United States, and Jackie Rosen is a very well-liked senator. Um, she's been doing very well in her campaign thus far, and I could, and I think that it's, I would characterize this race as likely to go to Jackie Rosen. Um, I think it's going to be in the Democratic column either way, either lean or likely, I think you can make an argument for, but I would say likely, just based on um, the setup that we have between Dean Heller and Jackie Rosen, and I can guarantee that once more um, opinion polls come out, uh, we'll see uh, we'll see this race um, start to go more and more in Jackie Rosen's favor. Um, okay, uh, Montana, um, the conservative Democrat John Tester, who was the incumbent here, I, either one term or two term, I'm not too certain, versus Matt Rosendale, the state auditor. Um, most people look at this state and characterize it as a toss-up just because Montana is typically solid red in just about any single election prediction. Um, but John Tester is very well liked in the state for a Democrat. He's very well liked. I I, I'm certain his, his approval is over 50%. I don't know if it's into the 60s. I think it may be, but I know that he has a good approval here. And Matt Rosendale is just the state auditor. He's very little known in this state. And for that reason, I'm going to characterize this as likely. Uh, North Dakota is an important race and a very close one that we'll talk about um, once I get to others. Uh, New Mexico, um, I think I might have characterized this as likely in my last election prediction. Maybe safe, but I'm still going to characterize it as safe again. Um, Martin Heinrich does have a good approval in this state, and I do believe that he's going to win. I don't think it's likely for him to lose at all in this state. Um, okay, so Texas is the first one I want to go in depth on. Um, so Texas, I remember earlier on, um, for the Senate race in this state, it was almost characterized as blue. Beto O'Rourke almost seemed to have like a pretty decent fighting chance in this state, but I've been, time has gone on and more opinion polls have come out and Ted Cruz is consistently leading by double digits in most polls. I don't think he's leading by double digits overall, but I don't think that this state is likely to go blue. Beto O'Rourke, I think, has the best chance of any Democrat to win this state. He's running an excellent campaign, unlike none we've ever seen before. And his campaign strategy, 
of going to each and every single county in Texas will definitely revolutionize um, the way candidates in general campaign in Texas in the future. But I think that it's very unlikely for Beto O'Rourke to win against Ted Cruz. I, don't, I think it's unlikely for any Democrat to win against Ted Cruz in this election cycle. I believe that it's possible maybe like one uh, one election cycle down. I think it could be even more possible for this. I think it's going to be more possible for this state to go to blue, two election cycles down, or one election cycle down, I, I think. So for that reason, I'm going to characterize it as likely red. I, I think that, that this is the characterization that most people have been making. I think that most maybe want to stretch it and say it's a lean, but that's just based on raw speculation. Well, I guess everything on when it comes to predictions is based on raw speculation. Um, but just looking at the raw information and facts, um, you can't really characterize this as any more than a, a likely red state for, for Ted Cruz, which regardless is pretty good for the Democrats. Okay, um, now going through the Rust Belt. Uh, Michigan, um, there's not yet a party nominee for um, the Republicans. I do believe that there's one, um, I forget his name, he's an African-American former veteran. Um, he does seem to have a pretty solid chance against Debbie Stabenow, but regardless, I'd characterize this as likely. Um, I'd characterize the special race um, in Minnesota as likely as well. I believe the only reason why this isn't safe is because of the, um, the all the all the sex scandals that have occurred with um, the past incumbent here, Al Franken, but regardless, um, I would characterize this as likely blue. I don't think that Tina Smith is someone who can lo lose this race against uh, a state senator. Okay, um... Now, Wisconsin, I've seen a lot of predictions characterize this as um, a lean and not likely, but looking at the approval numbers, which there haven't been a, not, a lot of given, there haven't been a lot of approval, there haven't been a lot of pollings um, taken in this state, um, and the Republicans still haven't selected a nominee, and there's two contenders that could get it, so it's kind of hard to make a characterization of the state so far, but I, regardless, I will. Um, I believe that this state is also likely. Tammy Baldwin is very well liked. Um, she has a very solid background. She's very well liked in the state overall. I would characterize this as likely in her column. Okay. Um, now going over to um, the more north north northeastern area, um, Ohio. I would characterize this state. I'm going to characterize this as I'm on the fence between lean and likely for this state because Sherrod Brown has made a comeback in approval numbers, and Jim Renacci not so much. I believe it's how you pronounce this last name, Renacci, I have no idea. Um, I'm going to say lean. I'm, I wouldn't, I don't think I'd characterize this as a likely just yet. I'm going to need more information and more solid statistics in Sherrod Brown's favor before I characterize this as anything more than, than a lean. But regardless, I would say safely that this is a state in Sherrod Brown's column, uh, without a doubt. Now, West Virginia. Actually, before I get to West Virginia, I'm going to characterize um, Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania is definitely likely, if not a solid red state. Um, Bob Casey is, has a pretty fighting, good fighting chance to win the state. Um, more than a fighting chance, obviously. I think that he's definitely going to win. But regardless, it is a pretty finicky state when it comes to um, elections in general. And, I mean, I, I think that it could be a bit of a... I don't know why I'm talking about this state so much. I think that Bob Casey is probably going to win here. Now over to New Jersey. Um, you would think that the whole corruption charges, or not charges, nothing's been charged against him, but the whole corruption accusations against Bob Menendez would be doing worse for him, but he has been cleared of them, and he doesn't seem to be taking that much heat in the polls, and so for that reason, I would characterize this state as solid blue, um, even given uh, Bob Menendez's um, past. And now for... I, I know I said I'd get to West Virginia before, but I'm just going to go around it and then and then get to it. Um, Virginia, this I think this state is solid. There are some people who are saying solid blue. There are some people who are saying that the state is not solid blue, that it's likely or even a lean. I think that that's just not, ignoring polling information and ignoring the information in general. Uh, Tim Kaine is a very solid part of the Democratic Party. He's very well liked in Virginia. Um... And in a statewide election, in his home state, as an incumbent, I think he'd do pretty well, especially against someone like Corey Stewart, who is little, very little known. I think there could, there's probably some sort of, like, corruption or some kind of charges against Corey Stewart. I'm not entirely certain. I heard something bad going around about him, but regardless. All right, now on to West Virginia. This is a pretty interesting race because um, it's West Virginia and it's a Democratic incumbent, so of course it's going to be an interesting race, but it's interesting because... Um, 
God, what's his name? Um, the ex Cole Baron, um, the the ex convict. I can't remember his name right now. Okay, you guys know who I'm talking about. But he lost the nomination for the Republican nomination, obviously. But he still is going to be running on the ticket of the Constitution Party, and in a race that is this that's going to be this close. Um, I think that that's going to peel away a significant part of the Republicans' numbers. So for that reason, I'm going to characterize this as likely blue, just because of the vote splitting that's going to occur um, between Don Blankenship. That's the name. Of, that's the name I was thinking of. Don Blankenship and Patrick Morrissey. So hopefully that's sound logic to all you guys. If you have any questions about that, then leave them below. I know this is kind of a bold call to make. Uh, Indiana, I'll get back to Tennessee. I'll get back to as well. That's an even trickier race to call. Um, however, Mississippi at large, obviously, is going to be solid blue. Um, David Barria, I didn't even, I didn't even see that that, there, that the Democrats have nominated so, someone yet, but very little chance um, in the statewide. However, um, in the special election, Mike Espy is a much more big name Democrat, and the special election, I believe, there are different rules here that um, will make it a better chance for the Democrats, but. Regardless, if we're all being honest with ourselves, the Democrats are not going to win in Mississippi unless there's a, um, a, Doug, a Doug Jones versus um, – uh, I can't remember the name right now, but a Doug Jones situation in Alabama that occurs in special elections, it's not going to, it's not going to happen. Okay, um, now these are some of the hardest races to call, I think, so I'm going to go in order, order from uh, least difficult to call to most difficult, I guess. Okay, so Arizona – um, I feel pretty confident in calling that likely for the Democrats. Kristen Sinema has been pretty consistently leading against um, every single uh, Republican um, challenger. There hasn't been a Republican nominee so far. It looks like it's going to be um, Martha McSally, but who knows? It could be um, Kelly Ward or someone else. Um, but not only that, regardless of who the nominee is, um, Joe Arpaio, I, it looks like he's going to run a third-party campaign here. And if he does, it's almost guaranteed to go to Kristen Cinema. If that's the case, uh, that's just speculation at this point. But regardless, I'd call this as le as a as a lean in the in the Democrats column. Um, okay, so North Dakota um, is the first Democratic held state that I'm gonna give to Republicans. Um, Kevin Kramer is um, representatives in the state at large are al almost very well known throughout the state. They're, they have good rapport with the entire state, and Kevin Kramer is definitely one of them, one of those representatives who have who has a good rapport with the state at large. And Heidi Heitkamp has a very narrow lead in approval numbers, and as a Democrat, it's going to be even harder for her. I it's, ve it's a very tough race to call, but I'd give it a narrow lead to Kevin Kramer. So right now, Republicans are one away from the majority as a result of the VP factor, and we still have uh, four races to call. Missouri, I'd call narrowly in Claire McCaskill's column. I think that there are um, poll numbers taken that um, show Josh Hawley ahead, but I think that his ties to uh, Josh Greitens, I believe, the governor of Missouri and the corruption that's going on there, because he was the attorney general under um, Governor Greitens. I believe this I pronounced the last name Greitens. I'm not entirely certain. Um, but I believe that that um, is going to, in a race as close, is going to affect him. Um, and I would give a narrow lead to Claire McCaskill. Um, <coughs> Indiana, I would call very narrowly in the favor of Joe Donnelly. I have, and I haven't taken a good look at poll numbers here, but I would still call it um, call it narrowly in the favor of Joe Donnelly, just as an incumbent, and as I believe his approval is above fifty percent. Don't quote me on that. I believe it is though. Um, Okay, so it comes down to these two states, which are the, mo the most difficult to call. Florida. Florida, currently, I would call for Rick Scott. I believe that uh, Rick Scott running for the Senate race changed things completely from my last Senate prediction to this one. And I believe that it's going to be very close, paper thin, between Bill Nelson and Rick Scott. But I do believe that Rick Scott, as a popular governor, will be able to edge it out, which is remarkable in a state that has seen a shift towards the Democrats in general recently. But currently, I'd see him edge it out. This could change my next election prediction. We'll just see what happens. Um, as more polls are taken, there haven't been a whole lot in Florida taken so far. But we'll see. Tennessee is the most difficult to call. And this is because Phil Bredesen, the former Tennessee governor who left with the, 
I believe, a 70% approval rating, um, is leading in polls, I believe, above 10%, which is remarkable. Um, but regardless, that could change on a dime, I think, in a state like this. Um, but currently, currently, if things continue at the pace they are, which they probably won't, but if I'm taking that into consideration, then I would call the state as a narrow lean to Phil Bredesen. Um, this can very well change very quickly, but I guess we'll see how that um, works itself out when I make another one of, one of these predictions. All right, so this is my map, uh, 50 to 50, with the Republicans having a technical majority with the VP factor. Um, I'd love to hear what you guys think of this map. There's definitely a lot of things that I could change and, re and reconsider um, in some of these calls I made, um, and I'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, thanks so much for watching.